Hey, what's up Linda users, I'm Jonathan and in today's video we'll again talk about advanced typography and how you can create renders like these. The process is actually pretty simple, so let me show you how it's done. Oh and by the way, if you enjoy my content, consider subscribing because I upload a new video every Saturday and with that said, let's get started. First of all, I want to set up the scene so I can start creating the letters. For this, let's select everything and delete it. And now let's add an A text object. Okay, let's start by typing in the letters we want. And for me, these are going to be my initials, J and K. I want to change the text alignment from left to center. So we can now rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis and it is standing on the ground floor. I do not really like the Blender default font for this project because the J starts on another height than the K. So I will choose a font that works. And I think this is a good choice. Now let's push this text back on the Y axis and let's create a camera, clear out the rotation and location and rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis. With 0 we can enter it and with GZZ we can push it back and also upwards. Now our scene is pretty much set up and we can start rebuilding our letters with different objects. For this let's press 1 and go into front view and with the camera selected press H to hide it. With Shift A we have a variety of default objects that we can use to rebuild our text. But there are some add-ons that are shipped within Blender that allow us to add even more default objects. To enable this add-on let's press F4, Preferences and search for the Extra Objects add-on. Enable it and now we can see that we got lots of new objects that we can use. For a render like this you can either choose to restrict yourself to one object group for example only creating the text out of cubes or randomly pick objects that fit. For this video I will only use cubes and see how it turns out. Now after adding in the cube I will start by scaling it of course to the correct scale and now I will try my best to rebuild both of the letters. Personally I really like the beveled look so I will just add in a bevel modifier. For this to work correctly let's apply the scale and now we can choose angle as our limit method and turn down the amount and turn up the segments. And now we can start duplicating this cube or adding in different objects to create our final model. And just like this, I have placed all the cubes to make up both of the letters. To fix issues with beveling, let's again apply the scale for every single object. And now we can start worrying about materials, because good materials are probably the most important part of renders like these. Right now, our scene looks pretty clean and I do not want to change this, so I will use a pre-made color palette for the materials I'm about to create. Using these pre-compiled color palettes will help make our scene look like it belongs together because all of the object's colors will match. So let's search for a color palette we like and for me it's going to be this one. And now we can start copying these colors and assigning it to the materials. So back in Blender let's start by creating the materials. I do not want one material for every single object. So let's select for example this object group right here. Press new and then with one object highlighted press ctrl L and materials. Now all of these objects share the same material. In the shader editor we can now add in a color ramp and assign the hex values of two colors from our color palette to both of these handles. Now using the object info node and the random output we can randomly distribute colors to this object group. In the material preview mode you can see what this will look like. And you can see that all of these colors work together nicely. We can now select different object groups and repeat this process. And just like this we have assigned colors to each individual object. Our default text is now no longer needed so we can delete or hide it. And for now I will just go ahead and hide it from the viewport and renders. Great! Let's quickly set up our lighting so we can see how this will look like in the end. And once we have a better understanding of how it looks, we can even add roughness and normal imperfections to some of our objects. So let's switch over to cycles and let's add in a simple HDRI texture. Just like this. Great. Let's also add in a floor plane and let's select this edge, extrude it upwards and then bevel this edge just like this. We can now right click and choose shade smooth and now we have a usable background. 
Awesome, we can now also give this background a material and choose a color we think fits. I really enjoy dark themed renders, so I will go with an almost black color. To make the lighting a little bit more interesting, let's add in an area lamp on the top and give it a color that matches with our color palette. You can now either leave it at that or play around with the materials a little bit more. I think this scene doesn't need any more advanced materials, but you can see that for this scene, where I also used different objects to make up the letters, I used materials like wood and surface imperfections like fingerprints on some of the objects. Doing this isn't particularly hard, you just need a good texture and most of the time either smart UV project or cube projection works for applying these textures to the model. Of course, if you're using a color palette, make sure that for example real world materials like this wood match with the other object in your scene. The only material that doesn't need to be matched to other ones is probably glass. Most of the time it fits perfectly. But yeah, this is how we can create these kinds of renders. By now you have probably seen some of them on Instagram, so I thought I'd show you how to make them. If you have any further questions, you can always ask me in the comments. And with that said, we'll see each other in the next video next Saturday.